and he brings the heavenly host with him. So when you praise him, you invite him into your condition. You invite him into your situation. You invite him into your insecurities. You invite him into your inadequacies. Today, we have an opportunity to set the tone for this year. We have an opportunity to set the tone for the whole church world. Yes, little you. If Jesus can set the world on fire with 12 men and one of them is a devil, then we can set the world on fire with a few of you. Now listen, I want you to put your hands together and fight the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in this place. Right now, let's hit the tone. Come on, hallelujah. Yeah. 
Jesus, 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 Jesus. See what you what you gotta understand. See what you gotta understand. The person that's on the left of you and the right of you, that is still worshiping God. They understand how this thing works. See, you gotta give, you gotta give God, you gotta give God permission. You gotta give God permission to bless you. See, our God is a gentleman. He doesn't impose his will on you. Huh. Whosoever will. Uh -huh. See, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. Uh -huh. See, you have to invite him into your space. So you're wondering of the sounds. Oh, hallelujah. What's going on around you. But that is a sound, hallelujah, of the Holy Spirit is the sound of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, when they were all in one place, on one accord, the Bible says the Spirit came in like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole place. Hallelujah. And on them was of cloven tongues. Hallelujah. I, I feel like at this point the writer was like, oh my goodness, this is the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that it was a sound though. Before, before it even hit, it was a sound that came from heaven. Which tells me that there had to be a sound that happened on earth first. Because the Bible says, what you loose on earth shall be loose. So you got to understand that some of us, Some of us are missing out on the blessings that is due us because we're not making a noise for our things. And that's what the enemy, Satan, Lucifer, Diablo, the devil is counting on. He's counting on you to keep your mouth shut. But they tell me that closed mouths don't get fed. Now, if there's anybody that needs their food from Jesus, I dare five people to open up your mouth and make a joyful noise to heaven so that Jesus can make a joyful noise. Hallelujah! church on the hill see God wants to take us to another dimension so different dimensions take another level of praise now I don't know about you and I ain't leaving nobody behind because I'm the pastor I have to leave the 99 for the one but you won, don't you hold us up from going to the next dimension. I dare you. I dare you, whoever you are. The same way you get excited when a touchdown is scored. 
The same way you get excited when you got promoted. The same way you get excited when somebody tells you they love you. I dare you. Woo! I dare you for a moment to take your praise to the next level so that God can take you to the next level. It's up to you. It's up to you. heard the Lord if you're struggling right now I need you to close your eyes and hear the sound of God I need you to close your eyes and hear the sound of God keep praising keep praising keep praising I want I want you to know what you're hearing you're hearing freedom you're hearing the sounds of freedom the sounds of peace the sounds of healing I heard the Lord tell me to tell you I heard uh, listen if you give him all, he'll give all to you. If you give, if you surrender all to him, he'll surrender all to you. You can't have, you don't have room enough to contain it. If you just give him all. Close your eyes, 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 close your eyes. Come on, one more time. Close your eyes. Close your one more time. Close your eyes. If you if you surrender, if you just if you just surrender, 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 if you just surrender. If you just surrender, 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 if you just surrender.
Acts chapter 3. Keep playing them drums, son. Acts chapter 3. For the record. Am I up, Daryl? For the record. For the record. Am I up, Daryl? For the record. I love this freaking church. I don't care. I don't care how you may. I love this freaking church. This church is amazing. You are amazing. You are not just sheep. But you are his disciples. You're not just his sheep, but you, I'm talking to you. You are his disciples, you are his followers. And I love this church because I love you. I love this body. I love this body. And when you're hurting, we all hurt. And when you're winning, we're all winning. And when one of ours, family, hear what I'm saying before we get in this text. When one of ours is under attack, under scrutiny for something that they did or did not do. Hear what I just said. Whether they did it or they didn't do it, that's my family. And, and you better not say nothing about them. We'll handle them. We'll let our father handle them. And we will cover him. But don't let you YouTubers, Instagrammers, influencers talk about one of ours. Because last I checked, that man in one year wins more souls for Christ than those YouTubers in their lifetime. And I would appreciate if that man is on our team. He's on our team. So if he did something wrong, let God be God and let the church cover him and be the church. And when it's time to kick some devil's butt, we'll get him back on the field to kick some devil's butt. But us as the church, don't get caught up in no individuals that call themselves Christians and criticizes another Christian. The Bible does not call for us to criticize one for another. The devil is the accuser of the brother. We are called to restore with meekness. Don't beat them up. Come here, man. Because you know what? We need TD Jakes. I like, I like to keep him on our team. I don't know Bishop TD Jakes, but I know, the, I know some souls that was one to Jesus. And if he messed up, let God be God. And you be the church. Amen. Acts chapter 3, 1 through 8. NASB. Don't give me King James because I'm not in a Shakespearean mood. Give me the NASB. Praise God. Acts chapter 3. Verse 1 through 3, if you allow me to embellish you today, my prayer is that God has his way. The football game was yesterday, praise the Lord, and we still rank number one. Hallelujah. All they say about, you know what's amazing before we get into this text? We're in Baltimore. I just, let's let me just, we setting the tone. Just let me, just let me. We're in Baltimore. Other cities in this country 
shuns this city. They say that this city is the, the, the worst in the barrel. And isn't it amazing that God chose us? He chose us to expand his kingdom in this territory. We must be some, listen, God is intentional. It's nothing that he does by coincidence, which means that you are equipped, that you are, that you are valuable, that you are powerful enough to make a change in this city. You thought you was a misfit. That's what you was in the other church. You, somebody, somebody got it. You was a misfit. Washed over. Huh. Nobody cared about your gifts. But in here, God has called you valuable. And he needs you to be on the front line. God said, he takes the foolish thing. This foolish? Me? Me? It's foolish. He takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And he's intentional. That's why he chose you. Yes, you. The Bible says where I'm weak, he is made strong in our weakness. Which means that you have the ability to allow God to be strong in your life. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3. Open one of those doors up. My people are hot. Hallelujah. I know you're hot. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour. The hour of prayer. And a man who had been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along whom they used to set down every day at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful. I like that. That they used to set down every day at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful Let your neighbor say beautiful in order to beg alms of those who were entering the temple come on verse 3 when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple he began asking to receive alms Four. but Peter along with John fixed his gaze fixed his gaze my god what does that mean he fixed his eyes most didn't know what that meant he fixed his gaze he fixed his eyes on him and said look at us what did he say yes five and he began to give them his attention expecting to receive something from them but peter said i do not possess silver and gold but what i have i give you in the name of jesus christ the nazarene walk and seizing him by the right hand, he raised him up, and immediately his feet and his ankles were strengthened. Come on. With a leap. Somebody say, with a leap. Somebody say, with a leap. I believe you now. He stood upright and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them walking and leaping and praising God. Talk, say it with me, saints. Keep, keep it right there at eight. Keep it at eight. Say it with me, saints. Walking and leaping and praising God. Say, now, now this time, say it with me. Walking and leaping and praising God. Let's say it again. Walking and leaping and let's say it one more time. One last time. Walking and leaping and praising God. Today is the day they will remember us because we will be the church that leaped. They will remember us. We'll forget about it. We'll, for, we'll forget about it. But they will remember us as the day that ministry leaped. Father, in the name of Jesus God, we are here because of you. We are here for you, and we are here to hear 
from you. Now hide me behind your cross, Lord. Help me to say what you want me to say to your people. And the most of all, Lord, just have your way. Do what you want to do with this vessel. It is sanctified because of your cleansing. Have your way. And let the church say, amen, amen. I want you to hug your neighbor next to you. Say, I love you. Say, I love you. If you got a neighbor on the other side, you say, I love you. You say, I love you. Even if you don't mean it, you say, I love you. You say, I love you. Even if you don't even mean it, you say, I love you. 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 Give me a lot. Hallelujah. I love this church. I love this church. Is it okay if today this message is probably going to be just 20 minutes? Is that all right with y'all? Somebody, somebody said amen. Then that means that, that, then that, that means I get this talk to you like we're in the living room. Can I talk to you like we're in the living room? Do I got to, do I got to, do I got to do that? Do I gotta? All right. So what? I, if you if you don't mind, I want to talk to you like we're in the living room. If that's okay. All right. My brother in Atlanta sent me a t- a text message, and I I'm gonna be honest with you. Since I've been a pastor, I rarely listen to other messages. I rarely listen to other messages. Pastor, why do you do that? It's because I want, I want to have a rhema word for y'all. Shucks, it's hard work going before the Lord, giving y'all something fresh every week. But my brother sent me a clip. It was no longer than about 15 seconds. And it was a clip with a pastor, God rest his soul, by the name of Dr. Miles Monroe. I know that is. My Lord, have mercy. Y'all about to make me preach. Don't do that. Don't make me preach. Well, in this clip, he says, get this. He says that the greatest gift being that God gave to man is not sight, but is vision. But is vision. Sight is the enemy of vision. Mm -hmm. Take my time. Sight functions in the eye. Vision functions out of the heart. God sees the heart. Hallelujah. Never trust what you see out of your eyes over what you see in your vision. Because what you see out of your eyes is what is. But what you see out of your vision is what could be. Out of what you see out of your eyes. But live by what you see in the vision. Because the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. For the sake of today's message, you're going to hear me interchange 
vision and faith. Right? You're going to hear me interchange that because it's virtually the same thing. Right? Right? Faith, let me prove it. Faith is the substance of things to hope for. But its evidence is produced of the things not seen. Vision. Okay. Right. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So he's not even pleased. Mm -hmm. You have to first believe that he is. And then understand that he is a rewarder for them that diligently, consistently seek him. It's vision. The vision does not only unlock a reward from God. The vision is also a key to access the kingdom of God. That is the eternal dwelling place yeah. that God dwells. It is his domain. It is his dominion. This is where God lives. Access to the kingdom is the keys to the, for the access is the vision. And you will have access to everything yeah. in the kingdom of God. I wish I had an amen. amen. See, see. See, I can, I know if you got a key, ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit, I can tell. Praise. Pastor, how do you know that? Because the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. If he, if he inhabits, that means he cohabitates with you. You literally invite the kingdom down to where you are. What are you saying, Pastor? I don't have to wait till I die. No. No. You can experience glory from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. Thank you, sir. Thank somebody listening. You don't have to wait, which means that in the kingdom of God, did you know, did you know, did you know that you are an heir to the throne? Yeah, the Bible says that you are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That means as a, as a prince in the kingdom, you can have whatever you want in the kingdom. Oh my God, I wish I had some people who've been there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is his kingdom. You can have whatever you want. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm, I'm trying to, I want to touch somebody's vision or faith nerve. You can have whatever you want, whenever you want it, because you have access. You li give me somebody, give me some keys. Give me, give me some keys. Give me your car keys. Give me your house keys. In the name of, give me them keys. In the name of Jesus right now, I prophesy right now a brand new car. Hallelujah. And a brand new house in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And if you knew what the name of Jesus Christ meant, then you would know that there are power right now in the life who belong, who these keys belong to. You have access. And if you have access, you can have whatever you want. Whenever you want it. How do I know? Because the Bible says in John chapter 14 and in John chapter 16 and in the other Gospels. Those are the only two I read. <laughs> Jesus says, if you ask my father anything in my name, he will give it to you. In John 16, excuse me, I believe it's in Luke 18, I believe, I believe. He tells the disciples, no, excuse me, in Mark, it's in Mark's gospel, I'm wrong, it's in Mark's gospel, I believe it's in Mark chapter 19. He tells Peter, if you give up 
everything to follow me, I will give you 100 times more in this life. You mean I don't got to wait to heaven? In this life. And the next one. You don't have to wait to going in to daddy's kingdom, getting whatever you want and bringing it out into the scene. Because you have keys. Help me out, elder. Jesus says, you Holy Spirit. Who do you say I am, Peter? And Peter says, forget what they talking about. Right. Let me give you, let me just give you a quick context. Context. Jesus says, who do men say that I am? The son of man am. He says, they're saying that you're, the one of the, you're, you're like one of the other prophets. You're like one of the other ones. Just like the other ones. He says, Peter, my disciple, my follower, who do you say that I am? The son of man am. And Peter says, you are the Christ. Oh, oh my God. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Watch this. This is vision. This is vision. He says, flesh and blood did not reveal that. Not what you saw out your eyes. That didn't do nothing. That eye socket, mm -mm, that lied to you. But you, you saw into vision. Said flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my father who's in heaven revealed that to you. And Jesus says, you are Peter, and upon this rock, meaning rock of revelation, rock of the vision he saw, I will build my church, and the very gates of hell will not prevail to it. And then the next verse says, and then I will give you the keys to the kingdom. Vision. The keys. Now, before I can go a step further, because we got to get in this kingdom now, not later, and, and not when we transition. Uh-uh. We leaping. Now, my leap's going to get higher later. I'm just warming up my calf muscles. Amen. <laughs> Most individuals who are believers, watch me, mother, who are believers literally are outside the kingdom of God. Oh. Believers. Why? Because they don't understand what the name of Jesus represents. Yeah. Yeah. But no, no, I, I, gave, I gave my life to the Lord and, I, you know, Jesus Christ, yes, good. But you have to confess with your mouth, and then the Bible says, believe in your heart. That's vision. Vision what? What I'm about to tell you. What I'm about to tell you. What he told me to tell you. This is what he told me to tell you. I just kind of just tightened it up just a little bit. Still lengthy, but I tightened it up for you. The name of Jesus represents, because you will have a lot of people saying, well, Jesus ain't his name. That's what the Greeks gave him. His name is Yahua or Yahshua. And you got to say the Hebrew name, but you don't know no Hebrew. But you got to call his name Hebrew. <laughs> Am I talking right, intercessor? You don't know no Hebrew, but you want to call his name Hebrew. And you have no idea what the name means. Gonna be saved by a name that you don't know. Sidebar, remind me to come back to this. Sidebar, Skeva's sons, the, the Skeva was a sorcerer and he had sons. And his boys heard Paul casting out devils in the name of Jesus. So Skeva boys was like, well, 
that looks like good business because we lose in business. Right? So they go and they try to cast out devils in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says it casted them dudes out of their own clothes. They ran naked. This is why. The devil said, Jesus we know. Paul we know. But who are you? Just because you call on his name, don't believe you believe his name. If you don't believe in your heart, you can't be saved. What was I at? Y'all ain't no fun. Jesus. Praise the Lord. We in the, we in the living room. My God, thank you, Jesus. So Jesus told me to give it to you in a bite-sized way so that you can remember. The name of Jesus, the word name means fame. It is what you are famous for. That's why a name is so powerful. Be careful of what you call somebody out of your mouth. Because God has given you creative authority and you can literally bless or curse somebody based on what you call somebody. Or watch this, believe about somebody. Oh, baby, can I take a, can I take a sidebar? Remind me about getting back to this place. We in the living room, right? The game ain't to next week, right? Not ours, because we, we buy, right? My wife and I, because I'm about to help, I'm about to help out a, a marriage right here. My wife and I gets into the worst argument on the first day of the year. The worst argument. We get into the worst argument, and it was at night. Oh my God. That, at night is when things are spiritual. I, I'm married too. It's spiritual for you single folk. Amen. And somehow, in our communication, my wife and I, somehow, somehow, we disrespected one another unaware. And my wife knew that I was a bit upset, so she comes downstairs. She says, what's the problem? What's wrong with you? Wrong with you? And, and, and listen, y'all know, y'all, some of y'all husbands, y'all know the wife will come in and they, they poke you. They wake you up, too. I, I'm laid out with the laptop, got the word. She... Right? Oh, we about to talk. We gonna deal with this tonight. Right? We gonna deal. We gonna deal this. Uh uh. We don't. We hey. We not gonna go to bed on this wrath. No. Not tonight. Now on the first day of the year. You gonna deal with me tonight? I said, all right. You want it? Oh, I wish I had somebody here. Oh, you want it? Oh, you asked for it then? And I. And I began to just nah 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 right? And then I closed by saying, "Yeah." <laughs> and my wife walked away, teary-eyed, and went upstairs. And then the Holy Spirit convicted me. Why? Because the Bible says this is a way you can keep yourself out of access of the kingdom. Ooh. Hear what I'm saying to you. The Bible says love your wives according to knowledge. Yeah. As under weaker vessel only means that chances are I can beat her in an arm contest. That's all that means, weaker vessel. Because no one, women are one of the strongest, matter of fact, probably the strongest species on the planet. 
Because men ain't built to go through the menstrual pains, nor that childbirth. We ain't strong enough for that. And women are reminded of that pain once a month. I don't want no smoke. And the Bible says that if you don't honor them as the weaker vessel, as co heirs to the throne of grace, I'm paraphrasing for, for those theologians that's going to try to criticize me. Just go back and read it, 2 Peter chapter 3. Hallelujah. He says that, that if you don't honor them as co-heirs to the throne of grace, your prayers will be hindered. If my prayers are hindered, I lose access. So I call, I text my wife, say, baby, get back down here. I just had to get something you asked for it though. So I gave it to you. And I said, baby, I'm sorry. I apologize to you, but this is the crux. This is the crux. I said, this year has got to be different. I'm not standing for the disrespect. She said, how do I disrespect you, baby? How do I disrespect you? I said, by you calling me Jeff. We in the living room. She says, what? I said, you don't call me Jeff. My mother, my father, my brothers, and my sisters calls me Jeff. You my queen. I never call you Ariel. I call you Lady A. I call you honey, baby, and whatever endearing statement I say. But I'll never endearing. But I don't never call you your name because that's because everybody else gets to call you that. But based on our relationship, you're my queen. And if at any point or any time I've ever disrespected you as my queen, I repent right now and I'm sorry. And I will live my whole life devoting myself to you and you as my queen. But I said, honey, I cannot live in this house. I can't bring this, I can't do what I do in this house if I ain't your king. It's power in the name. If I ain't your king, I can't do it this year because I reverence you as my queen and I'll do it till I die. But I need to be king. I can't be nothing else in this house. I can't be nothing else. I got to be your king. I hear you, honey. Next day. Next day. Watch this, men. I'm telling you, you try this when you get home, but be, but, but be wise. <laughs> the Bible says, husbands, love your wife according to knowledge. Know your wife. Know your soil. I get home from a long day work. My basement is not even finished. It's a dust bowl. I keep my little workout equipment down there just in case I, got, I need to get a little extra workout. The basement is, comp it looks like a retro fitness gym. I said, babe, the gym look, the, the, the basement looks brand new. What in the world? She said, I can't have my king. I will not have my king. I will not have my king working out in that dust bowl. You my king. And I said, that's right. Don't let nobody keep you out of the, ki the kingdom of God, even yourself. Where am I at? That's my, that's my crew. That's my crew. 
The reason why most of us are still outside of it, because we don't understand what the name represents. Now, here we go. Jesus' name represents a father's approval. In other words, the father saying yes. Okay. It is a son's acceptance of that yes. It is a father's approval, a son's acceptance. Both are yes and yes, which means that the son has to give up what he wants for what the father wants for him. Which means that the son has to die, literally, to what he wants for the father to have what he wants. And then the spirit of God, after you die, will raise you up in a leap. I, I need, I need, I, come here. I need, no, give, give me Jarvis, give me Jarvis, give me Jarvis. Come here, 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 come here. So I need you to be, dang, you didn't all got all bulky and everything. I need somebody skinny. Dang, boy. That's all right. You be strong, be strong. We're going to be strong, be strong. I'm going to be the father. And I need for you to be the son. TK, I need you to come up and I need you to be the Holy Spirit. All right? This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. No. Let me be the son. You be the father. Hey, boy, because you didn't got heavy, boy. I didn't got light on. But anywho, you be the father. Uh, you stand up here. Right there. You the father. I want you to say yes. Go ahead. Yes. I receive the yes. Come here. I want you to catch me. Now raise me up. Now we're going to do that. We're going to do that one more time. Now I need you to understand. That's the image of God. That is what his name represents. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Watch. Say it. Yes. Y yes. Yes. That, thank you guys, thank you. That is what his name represents. His name represents a yes. A receiving of that yes. And a rise with a leap. It is a yes, a yes, and a rise. It is a yes, a yes, and a rise with a leap. With a leap. Pastor, why you say it's a leap? We're in the living room, right? That don't mean I got to speed through. We're in the living room. The reason I'm saying it's with a leap, because, because the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, comes from a Greek word, dudamus. Which means, this is where we get the word dynamo or dynamite. Boom. It's an explosion. Yeah. This is why when the Spirit of God came in on Acts 2 and it came in as a mighty rushing wind and, and it filled the whole space, they began to, it was the, the power of the Holy Spirit. And boom. So when Jesus was raised from the dead, understand, it was with a boom. It was with a leap. Mm. Yeah, I don't believe me yet. Mm -mm. The Bible says when John the Baptist was in his mother's ooh, was in his mother's womb, and Jesus was in Mary's belly, John the Baptist leaped. The Bible says, "Filled with the Holy Ghost." The Holy Ghost will cause you to leap. All because you said no to your will and said yes, yes to his will. He will cause you to leap. Yes. He won't leave you there. Yes. All power. Yes. In this story, you follow me yet? Yes. In this story, there's a man who has a condition where he cannot advance forward. Do you follow me what I'm saying? He can't advance forward. 
he has a condition. And the Bible says they literally sit this man at the gate, at the entrance where God dwells. So instead of going into the gate where he will have access to everything he needs, whatever condition he has, whatever illness, whatever handicap, whatever inadequacies, he will get that in the gates of heaven. But instead of going into those gates, the Bible says he just goes up to the gate, he sat there, and he sits, and he begs for anyone that will show him pity, feeding, hallelujah, his sorrow as if the world owes it to him. The gate doesn't have security. The gate doesn't have barbed wire. The gate, there's no guard. There's no guard at the gate. He just literally sits there. How many of us has ever had a condition? Oh, when I say condition, that could be your marriage. That could be your mind. That could be your relationships. That could be your insecurities. That could be your anxieties. That could be your depressions. Hallelujah. Your condition, not able to go forward, allow you to go forward. And instead of, watch this now. And now instead of, thank you, Holy Spirit, going into the place that will give you answers to anything you could possibly need up in here, this is our year, I would rather tell my friends and tell my family and tell anybody who would be willing to listen so that they can, so that they can feed my insecurities, my depressions, my shortcomings, hallelujah, where I fall short, where they left me. Life's not fair. Where life's not fair. Where God made me like this. He made me like this. And the world, hallelujah, literally, and the world will feed your sorrow. It, the world will pity you. It will literally pay you while you sit there handicapped, crippled, and unmovable when the kingdom is right there. It's right there. I know people, literally, this is just an example. I know people, thank you, Holy Spirit, and this is in no disrespect to no one. But this is just an example of people who are on disability and the government is paying for their disability. I know people who are well enough to work full-time jobs. In other words, they have the ability to make way more money. But instead of vision, making way more money, they don't want to lose grip of their handicap. So they stay stuck outside of the access of what could be for what is. I would rather receive money from the world feeding my inadequacies, then someone feed my glory. This man would rather glorify his inabilities than glorify the Lord. And they will give, listen, and they will pay you to be crippled. In other words, people, thank you Holy Spirit, people will see you the way you see yourself. People will go, 
People will go fund you while you're in your identity crisis. The way you identify yourself, people will literally invest in how you identify yourself so that you can stay crippled outside the gate. And we would rather take man's money than have the wealth of God. The wealth of God. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Come on, somebody. We sit in the living room. Maybe I need to go back to preaching because I got some sleepers. I, the living room got too warm. They got, let's give them some warm milk. Got some sleepers. I think, I think the rapper says, more money, more problems. That's the world. But Jesus says that I will, give, I will give you gifts. I will give you riches and leave no sorrow. Give me the wealth of God any day over the wealth of the world. He will supply my needs according to his riches. Where is it at, y'all? In glory. I came today to give you this piece right here. This piece. And then I'm going to get out of here. For the life of me, Miss Joanne, I could not understand why this dude. I got, I got five minutes. That, that was the first I'm coming in. <laughs> we in the living room. We in the living room. They said I was in the living room, which means I can take my time. So, so, so not yet, not yet, son. Not yet, son. Don't give it to me yet, son. Don't give it to me yet, son. I'll let you know, son. Hold on. For the life of me, I could not get why this man who's 40 years old, every day of his life, the Bible says, he would go up to this thing and allow the world, world to pity him in how he identifies himself. Instead of going in where he can get help. And I just could not crack the code. I couldn't understand it. And I investigated this Bible and I said, Lord, Lord, I don't know why this man is doing this. And I'm not moving off of this text until you tell me what it is. And he gave it to me yesterday. And I'm, yeah! Y'all got to know this. As a, as a pastor, as a preacher, oh my God, I live for the revelation. I live for the vision. Yeah. Not for what I'm seeing. I, Lord, show me what I'm not seeing. And he showed it to me. And I'm here to give it to you right now. The reason why, give me 10 minutes and I'm, it's going to bless your heart. Give me 10 minutes. I got to say that because I got sleepers. My indicators are down. <laughs> My indicators are down. Dang. I, shouldn't have, I shouldn't have did the living room. Not, note, note it. No more living rooms. <laughs> Jeez, the, the diner next time. <laughs> the reason why he keeps sitting down every time he goes to the gate is because he sees a word, a name, on the gate, on the fence, on the entrance, and it says beautiful. And every time he sees beautiful, he doesn't believe he's adequate to go through them gates. Uh-uh, I don't, I, he doesn't believe he's a reflection of the beauty. I'm going to need this back in a minute. He doesn't believe he's a reflection of the beauty. So when he sees the sign, he realizes my condition ain't beautiful. My mind ain't beautiful. My marriage is not beautiful. My circumstance ain't beautiful. My business ain't beautiful. My job situation, I'm in Baltimore. It ain't beautiful. My body, it's not beautiful. I'm jacked up. Come on, somebody. I know what I am. I'm a criminal. I'm a sinner. I'm no good. I'm not enough. I'm inadequate. I'm handicapped. I have a disability. Woe is me. They left me. 
out to dry. They cheated on me. They quit it on me. He made me. I was born like this. I'm a monster. This place isn't for me. So he sits as a cripple, not able to advance forward through the gates where he will find his healing. Family, this is a trick of the devil. I said, I said devil, because in churches today, we got to start calling them out. Because the devil now has gotten bold. He's not hiding no more. He's in plain sight because he knows the church ain't calling him out, but I'm calling him out. The devil, Lucifer, Diablo, Satan, he's counting on you, hallelujah, to create your standard to his beauty. Listen to me, church, real good. Listen to me real good. You can't compete with that beauty. In Ezekiel chapter 28, I believe it is, is either 28 or 27, the Bible says that Satan was made perfect in beauty. He was made like that. But then the Bible reminds me that it was his beauty. It was that beauty. It was that beauty. That I'm saying that beauty. Look, look, look at me. Look at me. That beauty that got him to puff up and be prideful. And because of his pride, God kicked him off the mountain, hallelujah, with the stones of fire. Which means that God, the Bible says that, hallelujah, that fire consumed the enemy. This is in Ezekiel. I'm not making this up turning him into ashes so that anybody that he has vision can say, oh, that's the devil. See, the, the naked eye would be like, oh my God, that's, ooh, I'm intimidated. The naked eye is, I'm intimidated, I can't do that. I'm not smart enough. I'm not tall enough. Come on, I'm not educated enough. I'm not good enough. Mm -mm, no, I can't do that. Mm -mm, I'm no one, I'm crippled. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And Satan knows this. And the Bible says he consumed them with ashes. This is why the Bible comes back in Isaiah chapter 51 verse 3. He says that I will give you beauty for your ashes. Oh my God, I wish somebody caught that real good. What does that mean, Pastor? That means that God will wipe away. Come here, stand up, baby, so I can illustrate this thing real good. We're in the living room. Literally, God will wipe off the ashes off of your eyes, off of your head, and he will replace it with a beautiful hairpiece, hallelujah, a turban, hallelujah, so that you can be led by the vision and not led by your eyesight. Amen. Amen. Devil is counting on you to wage your standard with his standard. Hallelujah. Because he knows full well that he's a liar. And as long as he can keep you engaged in his lie, what you see, master of illusion, he'll have you crippled. Give me them keys. Crippled. Not even reaching for the gate. You glorify in pity. And Satan knows what you should know is that you were not made with the kind of beauty that he was made with. But the Bible says you were made in the image of God. You were made in that beauty. Hallelujah. And Satan knows that. Come back up here, my, my, my guys, my guys, my guys, my guys, my guys, my guys, my guys. And the image, you need to follow, you need to follow, you follow. Say it, say it. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That's beautiful to God. That's what's beautiful to him. Me dying and giving up all of my infirmities 
in all of my disabilities, in all of my inadequacies, in all of my traumas. He's looking. That's beautiful to him. Hallelujah. Now I'm coming in, son. And the, and the devil knows full well. He knows full well that if you know that, oh, this is so good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit. I'm in the living room still, son. Don't, don't, take, don't take it loud. I'm in the living room. That was two. You can play it, but not too loud. You got me, son. got me. Thank you. Jesus, the Bible says that he made us in his image and his likeness. Yes? Do you know that the Bible speaks of nothing on Jesus' Jesus' appearances appearance to be attractive? The Bible don't say he looked good. Jesus fine. You know, Bible don't ever say that. <laughs> Bible don't say he was beautiful. Do you hear what I'm saying? The Bible only talks about what he did. Not what he looked like, what he looked like doing it. Do you hear what I'm saying, saints? It was in what he did. That's what's beautiful. Which tells me that when Jesus says, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, in the beginning, when Elohim, when God created the heavens and earth, he said, "Let let us make man in our image, in our likeness. What that tells me, do you see the revelation? That God already visualized, oh my God, the beauty of Jesus Christ. How do you say that, Pastor? Because we were made in that image that you just saw. We were made in the image of the yes, yes, and leap. We were made in the image of yes, yes, leap. We were made in that image. And to God, he had that image, that vision, when he made man. Before sin even happened. Oh my God. Before sin even occurred, he already claimed that as being beautiful. Now I'm coming in, son. So what do I do? What do I do if I'm somebody that is stuck? Give me them keys. If I'm somebody that's handicapped, my marriage is handicapped, my relationships are handicapped, my mind is crippled, my body is jacked up, my heart is all over the place. I have a condition. What do I do? The Father is saying yes. Which means that you have to say no to your will to receive what he wills for you. Watch this. And God will give you power that will advance. Oh, 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 I'm prophesying to somebody. Just grab it. Honey, you make sure you grab this one. We can have this in our house. I don't care. I must prophesy, but you make sure you grab this. God, if you die, God will give you power, hallelujah, to advance leaps and bounds in the dream that he gave you. So people who have more experience than you, people who are educated, more educated than you, people who have more money than you, you will will advance leaps and bounds. I was my, my, my wife got that one. As long, long as our house got that, we got that. Come on, come on, somebody. Leaps and bounds. And watch this. That's number one. You got to die so that he can rise you. And number two, he's going to use the disability he healed. Listen to me. as your greatest ability. Your disability, God will heal and make it your greatest ability to move forward. So as you move forward in life, 
the thing that you sat on, that you were crippled by, that you was inadequate on, God will use that thing to show his glory. Do you hear what I'm saying? And he will do it with a leap. Do you hear what I'm saying? It will come with a leap, church. I want to do this. We in the living room. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Boy, 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 good thing we have it to two. <laughs> Y'all ain't no fun today. I should have brought popcorn out, huh? There's some, some Coke or something. God is so good. I hope you grab onto this thing. I hope you grab onto it. When you call on the name of Jesus, I dare somebody, call on the name of Jesus in your finances. Because now you know what it looks like. Call on the name of Jesus in your marriage. Because now you know what it looks like. Call on the name of Jesus in your businesses. Because now you know what it looks like. You call on the name of Jesus when your mind is acting right. Because now I know what I got to sacrifice. Because I trust him. Because if I trust him, then he will give me keys, y'all. Where I will have access to anything that I want. Father, I thank you for setting this kind of tone. I will never get that image out of my head when I call on your name, when I'm going through issues at home, when I'm going through issues at the workplace, when I'm going through issues in my mind. I will remember that I could give it to you. And you will take those ashes and give me your beauty, which is Jesus, dying and rising. So, Father, for those who are receiving the sound of my voice, will this, may this word resonate in their heart always. Lord, may it be the theme of their life. May it be the keys that they never give up or never compromise. May it be the keys that they frequent in your house. In the name of Jesus, amen.